There you go. Woohoo! Back home. Man. Oh, I don't like the city, I'll be honest. I got a brother who lives in the city. Bro, if you're watching this, I don't know how you do it, man. I get a headache. I hate walking around. I like going to the mega store and I like going to the hardware shops and the hunting and fishing, but the rest of it wrecks my head. I guess you're just going to be cut out for the city, but me, I'm not. Anyway, I'm going to cook a feed and I'm going to share it with you guys. Goat meat would have to be one of the most untapped resources in New Zealand as far as meat go. And the reason is this. Most of you don't know how to bloody cook it properly. You say, oh, if you get a nice tender nanny, it's good. But I can take any piece of goat meat and make it tender. And I'm going to show you the trick in that too. There's a uh, trick my old mate Kev taught me years ago. And he learned his trick from a bloke that had an Indian restaurant. So we're going into my room where I keep stuff cool. And as you will see down in here, if I open the fridge, I have had it hanging, but now it's on the floor a plate. A plate of goodies. So it's been hanging for about five days now, and that will soften it up a little bit and break it down a little bit but not nearly enough and that's why I've got to show you what we're going to do with this to make it good how am I going to open the door and hold the phone at the same time I'm not this is the thing about shooting a snap vlog for you guys it's off the phone and I don't edit or very little of it it's basically record pause record so every time I keep moving if I want to stop for a minute I'm going to stick my phone down like that there and hit the pause button like this Rightio, let me show you what treasures I've got on this plate. Hmm. What part of the body would that be? Come on, hunters. I'd say it's a piece that I don't know how to butcher properly. I think we can all uh, work out pretty quickly what this is. That's right, it's a liver. Now, I've been aging this meat for five or six days, so the other side, of course, is quite dark, and I'll slither that off. I won't eat that, probably won't, probably dog tuck it, but the top piece will be perfect. Aha, here's the fat. And around it, of course, is a nice kidney. Now this fat here, this is the best fat of any animal because it's around the internal organs. It's the best fat to eat. We keep that fat, we don't throw it away, guys. I know a lot of you do, but don't. Keep it. It's great cooking fat. If it's beef, it's called suet. If it's a pig, it's called leaf lard. If it's goat, it's called bloody good fat. So hopefully we've got a couple of... There's another one there, look. Look at all the fat around that. This is the, the real good stuff, man. And there's a kidney in there. With a chunk of meat, I guess that must have come off the back leg. And got a nice piece of rump left over here. Look at the size of that. Got all these bits. Look at the fat on this. Good goat fat. So this is all great meat. We've got a, another bit of, uh, that'd be shoulder, I think, there. Is it mm, coming down the leg? Not sure. But this, we know what this is. This is your back strap. Oh, I'm salivating. Look at that. And that's an undercut. No, it's not. It's a tendon. It's a front leg tendon. And look at this back strap. And again, more fat. Good goat fat. So, let's chop some up. I'm going to do some kidneys. I'm going to do some liver. I'm going to do some meat. So you've got a nice mixture of all those nutrients. And then I'm going to soften it all up in a pot with something. Something very cheap and very effective that you probably haven't used much of. Okay, land lovers, look at this beautiful knife for cutting steak that Vasa sent me. From Tapanui, he's a butcher there and he's a bloody good butcher. And he gave me this and it's a nice knife and that's all it's going to have is a quick, just a quick brush over the blade to bring the edge back up. Our first victim is this bottom of the rump where it comes down into the part before it goes down to the hock. It's got a lot of tendons in it, so we're going to cut across the tendons this way. Cutting across and that way it severs all the, the sinews that run down it. And we're getting these nice big round pieces like that you can see the fat and everything through it now i tell you my mate kevin and i we used to hunt in kenapuru and we'd go and catch a stinky old boar and kev would make it taste so tender and i'd say bro how did you do this this is really this actually so that's dog tucker that's got a bone in it i say how would you do that bro and he goes ha and when he do these curries to die for and i'd be like so stoked to eat his food yet it would be a stinky old boar that you have to make normally salami or sausage or something like that there. And he'd, he'd get it all and he'd just make it so you melt in your mouth. It used to have a slightly hmm, acidic taste. That should be giving you a clue now to what we used to, to put it in. Anyway, we're going to smack these in the pot. There's our magic ingredient. It's cheap Pam's malt vinegar. 
doesn't smell very flash. It's going to be pretty, uh, I don't know, put a, a reasonable amount in. I'm not going to be like shy on it because it doesn't matter. And we're going to put this straight into there. So what we'll be doing is we're cooking it in the vinegar. Ah, it's going to make your meat taste all vinegary clay. It'll be horrible. Yeah, it does. You've had sweet and sour pork. Nothing wrong with that. It's the other flavours that are going to counterbalance that sort of sour taste that you've got. One goat's kidney with all the fat in it. Sliced like this so we get the whole lot. We'll be throwing it in the pot just like that. And it's going to break down with the vinegar and all the meat. We're going to have it in the pot for around about half an hour. Kidneys and fat, smash them in. Time for the liver. I'm going to have, we're going to cut the liver the right way because the ventricles all run one way. They run this way, so we want to cut across the ventricles. So I'm going to go straight across here, and I don't want that bottom skin, so I'm kind of going to cut that to leave that behind. So I've got a nice fresh piece of liver, and there it goes. And there you can see the ventricle there in the liver. But we're just going to go like squares that are big enough to eat. Now when you cook liver long and hard, it dries out. And this will do that to some degree because we're cooking it for a while. But it will soften up with all the oils and fats around it. Is that enough liver? No, I think I want a little bit more liver. Liver's good for you. Contains lots of iron. And there's everything you need in your daily diet in goat's liver. You could just about live off that. You'd do pretty well on it. You'd feel pretty bloody good. So, going to smash our liver into the pot with the vinegar. And it's already starting to create its own smell. Got that, that sour taste coming up. But I can smell I can smell the, the goaty meat mixing with it and all, already starting to break down. It's a little bit... Because that's what happens. The fat's like uh, saying, no, I don't want to break down. It's still remaining quite, quite hard. But the rest of the meat's already... Uh, it's been in there for like five minutes while I've been just doing stuff. It's already starting to actually soften up already. It's interesting, isn't it? It breaks it down. It's cool. The gold bar of every animal. The back strap. Now, you can take the silver off by going down here. I'll, I'll do it. I wasn't going to do it because it's such a small piece. I don't want to lose meat. I'm going to take some off. And there it goes. It's off there now. See? There's no silver on that. But you know what? I don't mind chewing on it either sometimes. So, But I'm taking it off for the sake of most of you that want to have a real tender dish. And there it goes. There's the, the silver now left behind. And uh, we're going to make some nice little medallions. Cut these up. And they do not need to be thrown in the pot with the vinegar. They are tender enough just like they are. But I'm going to throw it all in just to keep a consistency anyway. We've got our kidneys. We've got our liver. We've got our meat. This is actually a foreleg I'm putting in there. You can see the tendons in it. Here, yeah, right through it. And it's all going in with our vinegar. I'm going to add a little bit of salt. And a little bit of olive oil for that now. Mix up. On the gas, and we'll come back to that in about half an hour. So today I'm making a turmeric and coconut curry sauce with the goat. And it's a yellow one. I've got these beautiful garlics grown by Tony over in Tarkica. Thanks, Tony. And that's his onion as well. Over here, a shallot and a nice spring onion. These onions are nothing to cry about, but damn... <laughs> well, it's given off right now. Okay. Oh, the smell. Really good, good onions. Here, I'm cutting up my goat fat. I'm going to be cooking the goat in its actual own fat. We'll start off by sorting the onions in the goat fat. The skillet's hot, and I've got a whole hand of fat to put in there. We're going to render that down, and it won't take too long, you'll be surprised. When you're doing a piece of garlic, and you want to take this hair off, the easiest way, the fastest way, is just to crush it, like that. It's not going to make anything less, you just pull off your, your skin, and there you have it. You've got your garlic, all good to go, and then you can start your, your cutting process. The finer you chop it, the more the flavour comes out. Shallots, I love shallots. Shallots kind of, I don't know, how do you describe a shallot? Is it between an onion and a bit of garlic? It's more mild than garlic. It's pretty, pretty chilled out vegetable. It's got really nice flavour and great for curries. Go 
got our garlic, our onions and shallots done. Let's check out what's going on in the pan. Oh, look at this, man. It's taken about 10 minutes. And look at the fat that's come off it. And these nice crunchy bits. Shallots can go in first. Garlic. Oh, the smell coming off that. Holy crap, that's good. And there goes our white onion on top of that. We're going to sort out all that in the fat. Oh man, it smells good already. It really does. I can't wait what this is going to end up like. I'm going to use a couple of tomatoes, mushrooms, there's my spring onion, and I'm going to cut a little bit of ginger up, but I'm going to put that in later. I don't want it to get too overcooked. Spring onions done. Beautiful mushrooms. I love mushrooms with all wild meat. I can't think of any wild meat I wouldn't cook them with. I do with pork, do them with venison, do them with goat, rabbit, hare. They're good on anything. And you know, when you cook a tomato, the goodness comes out even more. And I mean the goodness. The lycopene in tomato comes out, proven to be anti carcinogenic, means it stops you getting cancer. If you eat them raw, then the lycopene doesn't come out as nearly as much, and also the lectins in the tomato can actually upset your guts a bit. Ginger done. Everything in here smells great, but how is our actual meat doing? The main star of the attraction. It's been going for about 20 minutes, so it won't be starting to break down yet. But we'll just test it a little bit. That is a piece of flesh. Going to test it. Taste this. Actually, it's actually a tender test to test how tender it is already. I think it's a bit of foreleg. It's chewy still. It's only had 20 minutes. So, I was going to give it half an hour, but based on that, I'm probably going to give it 45 minutes to even an hour because that's still quite chewy. I would have expected that it was broken down more than that, but it hasn't. And that's why we test as we go along. Mushrooms in, spring onion on top, there's our tomatoes. Gonna give it 10 minutes. Gonna add some salt, we're going for about five minutes. It's not enough salt. Gonna put more on, I'm using pink Himalayan salt. It's had 20 minutes, so we're gonna smash our garlic in and give it a stir, and then put some nice curry powder on there with coconut cream. I'm using a mild curry powder, and I'm putting plenty in as you can see. Like curry, love it. This turmeric is actually one that you can drink. Now, turmeric is a really powerful antioxidant, it's good to uh, get inflammation down. And as you can see, I'm putting it in towards the end of doing this stuff. Try to get more out of a can, like a little bit more than that. Thank you. Uh, there we go, heaps. And that's what I want. The reason I'm putting it at the end because I don't want to overcook it, I want to. Uh, retain all the goodness and that's the same as I've done with the ginger and by god does that smell good oh people if you could smell this here goes the coconut now the flies are starting to come in here because they can smell it I've just smashed in some cream probably about that much was left in the bottle and this is New Zealand grass-fed cattle beautiful cream and as you can see we're just about ready to turn this off it's just going oh I don't want it to burn on the bottom, I'm going, to, yeah, I'm going to drop that temp now before it starts to go anymore. It's just perfect right now. The flies are coming in because they can smell something that's good. Let's taste just what our curry is like. That's a winner. Right. Time to do the meat test. How's the meat looking? By now, it should have started to break down. Let's see we, there's a good piece. Look, that's got gristle on it. See that? That there will be traditionally a very tough piece of meat. So you can see it's got a piece of gristle going right through it. Focus, focus. Come on, focus. Put you over here. Focus, focus. You going to focus? There we go. How is that? That will be a true test because it's got the gristle going through it. And uh, gristle is tough, isn't it? This is smelling so good.
Team being real tough. It's a five. Maybe a six. No, a five. It's good. We're good to go. Mm. We are good to go. So, we don't want all that vinegar. And we don't need the juice. That wild goat has been cooking for about 45 minutes in malt vinegar. Now my camera's all steamed up. We have kidneys, we have liver, and we have goat meat. I'm just going to run some water over that to give it a little bit of a rinse. Get some of the sour vinegar off there. Let's introduce our pan back onto the heat. And let's introduce the goat meat to the curry, and the onion, and the garlic, and the ginger. The coconut cream, the shallots, tomatoes, the mushroom. She's all looking bloody good. This is going to be a curry to die for. Put a cup of water in there, and we're going to cook it that for about another five to ten minutes, very low heat. Check out the main star of the attraction. This is it. Oh. The smell coming off that is divine. So I've made a side salad to go with my curry. I've got one whole avocado. I've got fresh radishes. I've got kikarangi blue vein cheese. I've got one lemon that's squeezed into it. Turmeric. I've got leaves underneath. And of course olive oil mixing it all up. And for dessert, my favourite, blueberries and cream. Alright, the moment of truth. I only eat one meal a day, so I make sure that what I eat has all the nutrition that I need in it. And I'll tell you something else. If I can't get good tucker, then I won't eat. I would rather fast and have no food for the day and miss a day than eat rubbish. That's how I feel about food. A lot of my life has been spent eating absolute shit, and I really paid the price for it. These days, I have a whole different outlook on food, and I'm dribbling. I'm trying to talk to you. That's probably more than I should put in my mouth at one hit, but let's see what it's like. It's got a bit of liver there and a bit of kidney, I think. The garlic, the onion, and then the shallots, and then bringing the ginger later on into it, so it's still got that heat on it. It is just to die for. It's a really good curry. It's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. This is it. This is a bit of kidney, eh? No. Piece of meat. As far as chewy goes, I could have cooked it a bit longer. And broken it down, but honestly, it's fine. I probably got curry all around my face. At least I don't have a beard anymore to uh, get stuff caught up in. I hope you've enjoyed my recipe. If you're a professional chef and you've watched me do something wrong, please comment below so I can always better myself because this is purely my recipe. I don't go on YouTube like other people do and copy their recipes. That's why my stuff often has mistakes and things in it. I do it solely how I feel it should be. I know there's a lot of cooking channels out there that do. They watch someone else and they just replicate it for the sake of the channel. I don't do that. As you probably can tell because a lot of my stuff is way out there. This works really well. I love it. I love the taste of it. And I recommend you try it. Good luck with your own harvesting of meat. Good luck with preparation and bringing the best you can to the table. Because life has few pleasures, most of our lives are hard work, struggle, challenges, but some of the things that we can do to make life that much better is, well one of them is, is make good tucker and put it on the table, put the energy and time into it, it just makes life better, and you know, we're only here for uh, a good time, not a long time, so do that, be good, can't be good, be careful, see you later. Right, I'm into it, I'm so into this. Avocado, avocado. Mmm. Oh, Mmm. Oh, man. Damn, it's good. <laughs>